Hello and welcome. This presentation has been created by the Respiratory Medicine Physiotherapy Team at the Northern General Hospital. The aim is to inform you of bronchiectasis and its management. The information from this presentation is included in the bronchiectasis booklet that you should have. If you do not have this booklet, please contact our department and we can send one out to you. The things that we are going to discuss are how do the lungs work, what is bronchiectasis and what causes it, how is bronchiectasis diagnosed, what are the symptoms of bronchiectasis, what are the signs of infection and how can it be treated, how is bronchiectasis treated and physiotherapy techniques. If you have attended a class previously, then you can skip through the slides to the ones that are most relevant to you. Let's first talk about how the lungs work. Air passes in through the nose and the mouth. As you look at the diagram, you see there is more airflow through the nasal passage. It is better to breathe than through the nose, as it warms the air with its blood supply, filters the air with hairs, and it helps to control the flow of air into the lungs. The air then passes down the main windpipe, the trachea, and then splits into the left and right lung. Here the air passes through the tubes, which are called bronchi. There are cells in the walls of these bronchi that secrete a smaller amount of mucus to trap any dirt or particles that are in the lungs. Also, these bronchi are lined with tiny hairs called cilia, which then help to move the excess secretions up and out of the lungs. Bronchiectasis can be caused by prolonged inflammatory processes. Inflammation is where the body tries to fight against infections or other invaders. The body will send an army of cells to that area to help fight off the infection. If these cells are present for a long time, or repeated return, this may start to cause damage. So anything which increases the risk of infections will affect the inflammation and hence risk of damage. The immune system in a child is not always developed, so the ability to fight infections may be hampered. Therefore, a child with pneumonia or whooping cough may develop scarring. Also, the immune response will start to weaken as we age. Bronchiectasis is not directly attributed to smoking. So what is this scarring? The bronchi walls become widened and less structured. As a result, more mucus is produced from the mucus cells. The cilia, the tiny hairs, can't always move the secretions and this will result in the secretions pooling in the airways. This pooling of secretions can increase the risk of infections, and with more infections comes more inflammation. This then becomes a vicious cycle. As you get repeated infections, you get the inflammation each time. With that inflammation comes the damaged walls and scarring. These damaged walls make it more difficult to clear secretions which leads to more pooling of secretions, which then increases the risk of infection. There are a series of tests which are carried out for respiratory problems, but it is the CT scan which can be used to certainly state whether bronchiectasis is present. In this image, you will be able to see the widened bronchi and occasionally the mucus within it. If you are to look at the two scans, the one on the left is a normal one. The one on the right, you can see the widened airways coming out from the black spot. A chest x-ray may determine if an infection is present, and a bronchoscopy is a camera into the lungs. However, this is not a pleasant experience, and doctors would rather do other tests before this one. It is important to know if you have an infection, so that you can get a timely treatment for this, therefore preventing prolonged inflammation. The signs to look out for are changes to your sputum, for example, the amount. This may be increased when the bronchi are inflamed and produce more mucus, or alternatively, it may be less if the secretions are quite thick with the infection and you are dehydrated. The colour may become darker. Bronchiectasis secretions may be clear or creamy in colour. You may cough up dark colour in the morning from the bottom of your lungs, but it will get clearer as the day goes on. If it stays dark for a couple of days, it may be infective, so collect a sample to drop off at your doctor's. You may find you get more short of breath going upstairs, or can't walk as far without stopping. 
you may have an increase in temperature or generally just feeling run down. We now look back at the slide from earlier with the bronchiectasis cycle. The reason that you have been referred to physiotherapy is so that we can discuss with you ways to try and break this cycle. We can help with the poor clearance to reduce the retained secretion. Over the next few slides, we will look at different ways that we can help to move the secretions up your lungs so that they can be cleared. The foundation of sputum clearance techniques is this active cycle of breathing technique. It consists of three parts, breathing control, deep breaths and huffs. Let's focus on the breathing control section first. This should be a relaxed breath and not too big. As you take the air in, try to feel your stomach swell. It may be helpful to put your hand on your stomach to feel what is happening. Breathe gently in through your nose and out through your mouth or nose. So the active cycle of breathing technique starts with the breathing control. This technique helps to get air into the largest parts of your lungs. This will in turn loosen off the secretions sitting at the bottom of your lungs, ready to move them up to the top parts. Do this for 30 seconds or 6 of these breaths. Then move on to the deep breaths. These are larger breaths, so your chest will move also to fill your lungs with air. This will help to move the secretions further up your lungs. Try to do three of these. If you do more, you may become a little dizzy from hyperventilating. Repeat these two steps again. So return to the six breathing control breaths from lower down and then the three big breaths again. Make sure you take your time when doing these breaths. Again, you may become dizzy if you do them too fast. Do a few more relaxed breaths before you finish the cycle with a huff. A huff is when you breathe out with your mouth open as if you are steaming a window but with a bit more force. This brings the mucus up the last little bit so that you can cough it out. As air moves up, it brings the secretions with it. Therefore, the huff can't be too weak as it won't carry any mucus, or too strong as it will cause you discomfort. Think about breathing out like you are cleaning glasses, steaming a mirror, or warming your hands. This video helps to demonstrate the cycle. The technique in this slide is called postural drainage. The mucus in your lungs moves with gravity, so being in certain positions may utilise this to move secretions to the upper airways, making it easier to clear. The picture on the slide shows some positions that might help and see what works for you. For example, if one side of your lungs feels worse than the other, then lying on your side with the bad side up may be useful to drain the mucus towards your main windpipe to clear. Doing the active cycle of breathing techniques in this position may help. Be careful if you have any cardiac problems such as high blood pressure, as being in certain positions may affect this. So now we'll talk about medications. You may be taking a number of medications to help manage your bronchiectasis. These may include inhalers such as relievers, like salbutamol, for quick relief when feeling short of breath or like your chest is tight. There are preventers like Simbacor, which are steroid inhalers to try and prevent inflammation and the build-up of secretions, which may cause infections. Or you might have combined inhalers, which have an element of both, such as Relvar. You may also have been prescribed tablets such as Carbocysteine, which is a mucolytic, to try and loosen secretions, making them easy to clear. You are likely to have had courses of antibiotics, whether they are short-term or long-term or if you have an emergency supply for when you feel an infection may be starting. It is very important to keep hydrated. When you feel dry, your mucus is dry and it is more difficult to clear. We advise people to try and drink about two litres a day, but drink more if being active or the weather is warmer. Coffee is known to dehydrate you, so we advise that for each cup of coffee you drink that you have an extra glass of water. Shower or bath steam is also useful to help humidify your lungs or putting your head over a bowl of warm water with a towel over you. Some people find it useful to do the active cycle of breathing technique after having done these things. 
It is very important to stay active and healthy and focus on your general well-being. Gentle exercise and keeping fit will help allow for setbacks when you are unwell, whether this is practicing going up and down the stairs or a short daily walk. The self-management plan is key for managing your bronchiectasis in acute exacerbations. There are three parts to this. Firstly, if you feel your bronchiectasis is getting worse, but no changes to your sputum, that you are not making any improvements within 48 hours, then make an appointment to see your GP. Secondly, if you are feeling more unwell, with changes to your normal sputum colour, amount, worsening breathlessness, coughing up blood, or chest pain when breathing in, then take a sputum sample to your GP for an urgent appointment. However, do not start your antibiotics until you have seen your GP unless advised otherwise. Finally, if you are confused, coughing large amounts of blood or are severely breathless whilst at rest or talking, then call the emergency GP or 999. Try to collect a sputum sample if you can and start the antibiotics immediately. You don't have to wait for the sputum results. Finally, we have some resources that you might find useful. The British Lung Foundation has an excellent website with helplines, support groups, a large web community and lots of easy to understand information. You can access their website on the web address on this slide. Breathe Easy Sheffield Support Group is a local group where you can meet people who also know what you are going through and you can learn more about living with bronchiectasis. Their number is also on this slide. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.